Let's go to Abuja. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. It d did seem like a tall order then, but it does look like the federal government is heating about, and not just the federal government, I think in conjunction with the state, they're heating about 7 million pupils uh, being fed or about to be fed under the school feeding program. Interestingly, today is the third commemoration of the Africa Day school feeding, school feeding of children. I, I will get clarification as to, you know, what the actual nomenclature of the name is or what the day is and what it is about in a moment but joining us right now to discuss uh, how we're faring so far on this program i have with me two lovely ladies in the studio not trying to patronize you but so far so good we've been having a conversation uh, to my immediate right is mrs bimbo adesomi who is head of the homegrown school feeding program thank you for coming on sunrise daily and uh, farther away is mrs obianuju ogoko who is a development consultant and also human resource specialist with masters in global development and international law she's also a youth and women activist and uh, started her career with the United Nations Habitat in New York you're welcome to Sunrise Daily thank you I think it's also important to state that she's a member of the PDP because yes, I am. you know this is a, uh, this can get political so let, let us also put that into perspective uh, you're very welcome to Sunrise Daily both of you. you so tell us now I mean let's start with you Mrs. Adesami uh, how are we faring with this program? We initially, it seemed like it was going to be a tall order to eat to hit 5.5 million children at the, at the end of 2017. But now the federal government says we're hitting almost 7 million children. Mm. How have we done this so far? Um, well, the school feeding program uh, was designed to be a collaborative effort between the state governments and the federal government, state, local governments, and federal. Uh, it wasn't a counterpart funding issue. We had uh, resolved that a while back while the planning stages were still on. But that was and initially the, the plan, that the, you know, the plan. federal government would bring yes. a fund, some fund monies and the state government should also bring their monies. Yes, but then we, when we had discussions with the states and we had issues with those funding, uh, other programs, we had to come to an agreement that the state government uh, participation in the program had to do with their commitment, their political will, their ability to drive the logistics and operational uh, activities around the program. So presently we're in 22 states uh, feeding 7.4 million children. So the federal government is funding this fully and solely now? Federal government is funding this fully and solely for primaries 1 to 3. Okay. So the state governments are expected to scale up to 4 to 6 and also to bear the uh, logistics and operational activities that has to do with the program. Uh, let me get this clear. So if, this, if the state government is interested in getting primaries four to six, yes. it has to fund it solely? It has to fund four to six solely, but what would work with the framework that allows for transparency, accountability, and sustainability of the program, which the federal government has put on ground. Mm. Do you have any problems with, not just not the implementation of the program so far, but the idea of a school feeding program? <coughs> what were your initial thoughts when you heard that that was going to be part of the program that this government was bringing on board? Well, I would say, um, Mount Bay, from what you just said, the school feeding program is not a new initiative you know, in, around the world. It's something that um, we all know about. It's a laudable initiative on its own. But the problem that we are having, for me, is in the implementation. We really can't run away from that. It is very important that children are fed the right nutrition, we all know. But how are you feeding them? What are you doing? Are they um, following the um, laid down procedure for feeding these children? From all everything we have seen on the television, these children are fed in their classrooms. Mount Bear, I am in. It is gory. It is a gory site. I went to a federal government school, by the way, and the federal government was responsible for our feeding. We paid some sort of school fees, but it wasn't anything so much, you know, some, some, something around the region of 8,000 naira. You had everything, you had your burden fees all inclusive. So we would say that the federal government sub subsidized our feeding. But then it was done decently. Out there. Looking at the TV, you have people who are eating in the classrooms. What sort of individuals do you think they're going to turn out to be? That's not decent. That's not healthy. That is a lot of health and safety breaches. Where should they be eating? In the cafeteria? In the cafeteria. So if the school doesn't have a cafeteria, they should be building one. But you see, before they started this program, the, um, the Nigerian Institute of um, Social and Economic Research drew up like um, 
a, 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 uh, they had a, road, a roadmap and a framework as to how the implementation should be carried out. And on that, I saw that there was a recommendation to the President, Mohamed Bouhari led government. This program was initiated by um, the PDP-led government. Government is a continuum. You want to adopt it. This is the reason why it stopped in 2005, and these are the things you would do to make it successful. And on the list they put, have a legal, um, uh, have a policy and legal framework so that it's sustainable. So you don't have another government coming in 2019 and say, we're not carrying on with the school feeding program. Um, there, are, there are benchmarks to be to be um, um, attained. One of it is that you should have um, hygiene, water, and sanitation facilities. As I said, I studied my career in UN Habitat. It would tell you that without water and hygiene in any social environment, you're going to have um, a high level of disease you know, and, and all that. And come, seeing what they're doing in Nigeria is appalling. This program has to be stopped. You have children eating in the classrooms. You have children, I sent some pictures to um, Chamberlain yesterday night. You have children who are eating in classrooms and their cups are turned down on their desk. It means that when they turn it up to drink, they have loads of germs. You know, there is, you have a child telling you that I'm drinking Limca. There is even no, it, it, it doesn't look as if the, 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 the structure is homogeneous. So you have people drinking Limca here. Some people are drinking pure water. Some people are eating, you know, in their classrooms. I've seen a couple that are eating in the cafeteria, but it doesn't look clean. Let, let me quickly let her respond to that before you come up with the question, Ajuri. So do you want to quickly respond to yes, that? She I says will. that you shouldn't have started without providing the right environment for those children to be able to eat. I, I don't agree with that. Um, I, I was part of the last administration's uh, school feeding program, uh, piloted, well, not the last administration, when it first started. Uh, we had to learn from what happened. Uh, what, what we did right, what we did wrong, and then scale up on that and use that to implement. There's no cafeteria in primary schools. We don't have any. There's no borehole in primary schools. Uh, what we have done was to allow them to start the feeding and then take the needs assessment forward to the relevant ministries, water resources, education, build this. Uh, partners have come on board to say, okay, we'll give you uh, water um, bo um, wash facilities to enable you have the minimum hygiene. Uh, when we planned the program, uh, we had hygiene planned along with it. We had a menu designed. What we need to understand is Nigeria is 36 countries in one, 36 plus one. So each state has a different menu based on the food grown in their communities. That is the homegrown of the program. And so each of the menus has to be something the child is used to from the house. We don't have water on our menu, neither do we have fizzy drinks. No menu is approved. We pay directly from the federal government, and so we screen what they eat before they eat it. We have health officers, the former environmental health officers that go to, from house to house to check what is being prepared. And they are doing all that. Before the program started, the, all these people had gone into houses gone into communities, brought up their needs assessment. As she said, government is a continuum. You cannot take up the whole issues around the school and leave all other sectors hanging. Uh, Mrs. Ogoko, I want to address my question to you because I, um, you know, looking at kind of the program in, this, in our third world context where you have these massive infrastructural deficits that have been there for decades, uh, you have all of these challenges, children who may not even have a meal mm -hmm. if not for this program, when you say that this program should be scrapped in, 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 in view of the absence of some of these uh, critical infrastructure, what alternative uh, are you and perhaps your party proposing to it? Um, I would say I went to, and the, let's, let's be very logical, like I'm not one of those bigoted politicians. I will look at issues quite critically and logically. I went to a secondary school in 1995 and graduated in 1999. I would expect that we'll be progressing, not retrogressing. To have somebody who is in the academic field telling me that there are no boreholes and there are no cafeterias and you went on to start a feeding program just shows colossal failure. I would expect that we should be progressing. Now where you have the Nigerian Institute of Social and Economic Research give you a recommendation ahead of time, you should have put first things first. You don't put the cat before the horse. You know, the, if you had infrastructural deficits, that should be one of the first things you should address. Provide boreholes in the schools, provide some level of water and sanitation, provide the right enabling environment before you start. To accept that you failed 
and you know there was, there was a failure and you started, just shows that, you know, these are human beings. You don't feed human beings on the ground. They don't grow up. A school in, in Gusau, actually, um, I think, to be precise, Meriria Primary School, somewhere in Gusau, in Zafara State, they are eating those foods on the ground. So you have this child who has, already he doesn't have the facilities in his classroom, so he doesn't have sitting, and it is not the fault of the school feeding for but, but you should have put all these things into consideration. So because of the lack of the, of the, of the classroom facilities, he sits on the ground outside. So he has all the last of fever, all the, all the feces and everything, and he's touching it, he's touching it on his face, on his mouth, and he's eating this food. This child is going to have uh, uh, bacteria that are going to be um, um, antibiotics resistant in the future.